Hello, I'm Barry Duncan, and I'd like to talk to you today about the heroic client, a topic very near and dear to my heart, because the client is the heart of change. I've always been enamored of this African proverb, until lions have their historians, tales of hunting will always glorify the hunter. But I have bad news, we have been the hunters in this proverb because the field has diminished client contributions and instead highlighted the unheroic size of clients. In Psychotherapy's Not So Hidden Story, the therapist knight in shining armor riding high on the white stallion of theory, brandishing a sword of evidence-based treatments, and slaying the psychic dragon of mental illness that terrorizes the helpless client. Boy, it's time to put that story to rest, and believe it or not, research can help us do it. Here are the common factors of change. Look at that top left part of the screen and see that big yellow ball. Those are client life factors and accounts for 86% of what researchers call the variance of change. But let's move some of this other stuff out of the way and see what it really is. It's the client's resources, relational support, and community connections that account for most of how people change. You see the overwhelming amount of the variance that clients account for in any endeavor of change in any service. And in fact, everything about the client that has nothing to do with us actually matters the most to therapeutic change. Everything else is pale in comparison. So this research suggests that we privilege clients' experience and rally their resources to the cause, asking what's right with them rather than what's wrong. And how do we do that? Well, there's no formula here. You know there's no formula for the interpersonal event that we call psychotherapy. It's more of an attitude that you bring, which requires a balance between listening empathically with a mindfulness toward resources that you know are there. And here we identify not what clients need from us, but rather what they already have in their world that can be channeled toward them reaching their goals. But you got to believe in the heroic client. What you believe and what you bring to the table matters a lot. Regardless of the low ebb of the client's despair, you must know that he or she can overcome any adversity. We have evolved on this planet with resiliency to thrive under any circumstance. You must know that human beings are not snapshots. They're moving pictures with far more texture, dimensionality, and nuance than represented by the problem story. And our task is to find ways to be authentic to find out those heroic stories. The good news is that many approaches recognize the power of the client. Solution focus, collaborative practice, narrative, humanistic, positive psychology, and many more. So there's lots of ways to tell heroic stories and to bring out the best in our clients. And of course, there's no magic models or questions. They all have to be guided by your authentic belief in your client and your genuine curiosity about their lives. One of my favorites, certainly not a magic question, but one that I've used often is a narrative informed question. And it goes like, who in your life wouldn't be surprised to see you stand up to this situation you're facing now and prevail? What experiences would they draw upon to make these conclusions about you? And what quintessentially used story would they tell to support their belief? I find that those kinds of questions invite clients into conversations that highlight their competencies, resources, and resiliencies. Here's three questions to consider while you're conducting a conversation with clients. What are the obvious and hidden strengths, resources, resiliencies, and competencies contained in the story? And what are the competing stories? There are always many ways of understanding any event in a person's life. Where there's confusion, there's clarity. Where there's pain, there's coping. Where there's suffering, there's endurance. And where there's desperation, there's a desire for something else. That's the side of the story I want to connect to. What is already there to be recruited for change? I'd like to ask you to participate in a brief thought exercise with me to illustrate some of the differences that I'm talking about. Think of a time in your life that was very difficult. What problems did this situation create for your personal mental health as well as your family? Did you use drugs or alcohol to get you through? What pattern in your life does this story represent? Who else knows this story about you? What do you think they say this story says about what destructive patterns that you need to change? Who wouldn't be surprised that you're repeating this pattern now? Now think of a time in your life that was very difficult but you managed to get through it. What personal resources did you draw on to get you through this difficulty? What family, spiritual, friend, or community support did you draw on to get through? What does this story tell 
you about who you are and what you can do. Who else knows this story about you? What do you think they say this story says about who you are and what you're capable of? And who wouldn't be surprised to see you stand up to your current adversity and prevail? So whatever metaphor you prefer, whether you like that the client is the lioness of change, or that the client is the heart of change, or perhaps you like the research metaphor that the client counts for most of the variance of change, 86% in fact. But whichever one you favor, the client is heroic and the main character of his or her story of change. Recruit, enlist, and harvest client resources. And please check out our new website, www.betteroutcomesnow.com, where you'll find 250 free resources about PCOMs, as well as improving your therapy via enhancing the common factors that I talked about today. And don't forget to check out the new PCOMs manual.